until very recently, the Holy Spirit was a forgotten God. All knew God, the Father, Jesus, and saints, and very few knew really about the Holy Spirit in the Catholic Church, especially. We were like people in Ephesus, where St. Paul went to see the Christians. They were Christians. Even they were called disciples of Christ. And he asked, did you receive the Holy Spirit? The answer, they had never heard of him. Yes, there are many Christians or Catholics for us not heard much about the Holy Spirit. And we know then he instructed them about the Holy Spirit and laid hands on them and prayed for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they prayed in tongues, they had all the charisms. So they started going to evangelize. They started going evangelize. So uh, why the charismatic renewal came in the church or any kind of renewal? It is to remove all this kind of ignorance. And as we read in the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 6, uh, many are dying because they do not know what they should know. They die in their ignorance. Yeah, that means uh, committing sin by the spirit of evil, maybe devil, Satan, or committing sin by the spirit of the world, and also the, the, our own spirit. But we are not aware. Why? In baptism, Jesus, God, the church, has given us the Holy Spirit to resist this evil and to be led by Him. And that's what actually uh, renewal. That is the meaning of Pentecost. There are many spirits in the world, as St. John says. You have to test the spirit to see which one is the correct spirit. And he was given the scale. The spirit that proclaimed Jesus is the only Lord is the correct spirit. Hallelujah. Uh, we heard it in the reading just now also. Uh, and also in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 3 we read, Without the Holy Spirit one cannot say that Jesus is Lord. And 1 John chapter 4 verse 3 says, There is a spirit of Antichrist, spirit that is working against Christ, who doesn't allow people to say that. And because they don't have the Holy Spirit, they are not able to proclaim Jesus Lord. So we can see in our church, especially nowadays, many people are reluctant to proclaim publicly that Jesus Christ is the only Savior, only Lord. This is one of the reasons the church is not evangelized. Mm. Even many remaining in ignorance and dying in sin. So here we Christians have a duty uh, to proclaim that Jesus is Lord. We heard in the second reading that very clearly <clears throat> that we had to proclaim uh, Him as the only Savior, only Lord. Then only people can come. I remember, you know, if I had uh, not preached that directly about Jesus to the Muslims, none of them would have opened their heart to Jesus. If I told them, oh, your Islam is okay, good, you are also seeking God in one way. Allah also is a God, doesn't matter. And uh, Muhammad, a prophet, like if I were to compromise uh, the teachings of Christ, none of them would have uh, opened their heart to Jesus the Lord. Why we are afraid? We are afraid. Uh, the fear, the same fear the apostles had in the cenacle when they gathered, no? For 50 days, they didn't speak anything about Jesus. You know, Peter and Patty <coughs> went to the seashore again for fishing. They went to their old job. Although they were told to go and proclaim the gospel to all nations and heal the sick, liberate those who are under bondage, as everything was told. But they forgot everything in their ignorance of the <coughs> power of the Holy Spirit in them. So they went for their work, old work, worldly work. They, went, uh, they were led by their own spirit, in other words, or the spirit of the world, how to make money sell the fish and become rich. Uh, that's all what they were thinking. And you know, 50 days, uh, they were praying, of course, not knowing what would be happening after 50 days. But when it happened, they knew what it was. It was a power. Uh, and immediately, we know, uh, Peter stood up and started talking. That's something great. Not only Peter, Peter on behalf of the 11, very clearly the Bible says, so that means others also must have spoken, but it's recorded is only Peter's speech. And uh, people, miracle happened, greatest miracle, not the lame walking or blind seeing. Greater miracle, people who gathered there uh, from 18 countries at least, 
they heard that talk in their own language. Hallelujah. Uh, so they were amazed. I'm a Greek. I'm a Parthian. Uh, I'm a German. Uh, I'm a Spanish. Uh, I'm an Indian. Oh my God, I hear in my own language. That was a big wonder, you know, big wonder. They were astonished. And some people then immediately began to calumniate, saying, oh, they are full of new wine. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure there was some, some gestures, clapping and lifting, jumping out. Oh, the joy, you know, the joy of the Holy Spirit, which people in the world cannot understand. That's why when we clap for and sing, many people in Germany or Austria, uh, France, uh, they cannot understand. These are crazy people. They might not say that we are drunk with wine or alcohol, but they say we are crazy, not normal. Yeah, that's the way the world evaluates the Holy Spirit. I don't say world, world in the Catholic Church. Yeah, many uh, don't know, they are the world. So they cannot understand the joy of a Christian by the Holy Spirit. So they have joy only when they take alcohol. So they measure the joy of a Christian also with alcohol. They have joy only when they eat and drink and make merry, dance. And they have never experienced the joy of the Holy Spirit. So they judge, calumniate. Uh, but as some people were astonished. Of course, they did not know the meaning. And then only Peter spoke and we know what happened. And he said uh, something great. Uh, you have received a portion of the Spirit of Christ. Often, you know, early morning when I put my hand on the chest to pray, my God, who am I? What a great man I am. I have a portion of the Holy Spirit. Oh, my Jesus. Each Christian can say that. A portion of the Spirit of God. Uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 217. Mm, two times Peter says, emphasize that word. You have received a part, a portion of the Spirit of God. And thus we have become Christians. And all these things and many, many things, you know, the beautiful word which I enjoy always is 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. He who is in you is greater than anything outside, anyone outside. That means in our heart we have an atom bomb. <laughs> yes, uh, a nuclear bomb perhaps. <laughs> what I say, a supersonic bomb. Huh? That's what Russia and America are having now, no? A hypersonic. Uh, so, and much more, I don't know, another word. Uh, I've learned Shakespeare to know another word. Maybe a most powerful uh, uh, supersonic uh, atom bomb every Christian has. Uh, to demolish and to build up. That means uh, to demolish the sinful life, the old life. And then rise to newness of life. Uh, that is a Christian life. Every day it must happen, not just one Pentecost day. Not in a retreat. Every day we must see that we are dead to sin. All that is sinful is destroyed, burned. And we must see like the phoenix bird. Uh, from ash coming out with the wings flying up. Uh, so we should be like that. All the past must be in ashes. All the sinful life must be put to ash. And then rise up. This should happen every day. That's the meaning of being led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah. Uh, now we do that. And let us be reminded of all that. Uh, for that morning, as I say, before you lift your heart in prayer to God, immediately you will see your defects, your sin. And you will collect them and throw into the fire. Burning fire. And decide for that day a new life. Life in the Spirit, that by the Spirit. Then I say, uh, the Christian joy will come. Christian peace will come in the heart. Of course, if it happens in Europe, many psychiatrists and psychotherapists like uh, uh, Richie and so on would have no job. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Otherwise, there will be many more such doctors. Yeah, that's what is happening right now in Germany. And in all European countries, spending money to psychiatrists or psychotherapists or going to doctors for various kinds of tablets and medicines. So the, we should add this bomb, the great tablet, uh, the bomb of the Holy Spirit in our soul. And then uh, there will be no depression, no sadness. Every day we get healing. Every day we go healing. Even when we physically are ill, we'll be able to take that illness with the joy in the heart. Hallelujah. Uh, when troubles and uh, sickness come, we have two approaches. One, depression, going on, uh, singing as a burden, complaining. The second side, uh, taking it as coming from God's will, 
or coming from the uh, what you call plan of God. I am a man, I am a woman. I have to suffer, one day I have to die. It's a part of my life. Sickness is a part of my life. Or death is part of my life. So not resisting, but accepting and thanking God, praising God and finding joy of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray that we may be like that. And on his own time, his own plan, he will do what he wants. As many are asking even, Father James, oh, you are praying so much, why don't you get up and walk now? Hallelujah, he has his own plan. Maybe his plan is that I be like this till the end of my life. Maybe I have plan, maybe on bed. We don't know. Whatever maybe, be ready to accept whatever comes. For that, we need the Holy Spirit. And to thank God at all moments. That's why St. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. Hallelujah, not only in the church, not only after Mass, not only after Pentecost celebration. Rejoice always, 24 hours, 365 days. Rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the reason of joy is not the blessings of God, but God Himself. And rejoice in the Lord. Who is with us? That? That's the greatest promise and greatest privilege and greatest experience. So thank God and praise God. Amen.